welcome all of you. Since last couple of classes, we extensively discussed varieties of 2D techniques, especially in the last class, one or two classes, we discussed NOSI, conceptual understanding, varieties of 2D NOSI experiments, NOSI experiments, where it could be one, it could be like steady state NOE, ROSI, heteronuclear overhazard effect, transient NOE using 2D. 2D is the transient uh, technique I told you uh, in the previous class, one or two classes before itself, I said it is a transient technique. So, there are varieties of things we discussed. In the previous class, we took large number of examples to analyze and get the confirmation of the molecule by using combined use of varieties of two dimensional techniques like COC, NOC, HMBC, HSQC, etc. Basically, at the end, NOC was used to get this confirmation information and also to get the information about the substituent in different places in a given molecule based on the correlation information we obtained from the NOC spectra. Lot of examples we took and in, in a given molecule there could be cis geometry, trans geometry or both could be present. I took all these examples and we analyzed the spectrum and fairly we were able to you know easily we were able to get almost geometry structural confirmation of all these molecules by using NOE correlations. One has to be very precise and one has to be very careful and of course, how you do the NOSI experiment for the 2D it is very easy. I mean you do not need to worry too much about it. Of course, there are certain complications which I discussed already we can uh, take care of it. But one problem with the 2D NOSI is it will take lot of time and also depends upon the mixing time and everything you have to set the mix properly mixing time. So, that you know there is a enough, uh, enough time for the spins to transfer ma magnetization between themselves which are NOE coupled fine. But I would say la, let me say I have a small molecule not like a big protein by mind you I wanted to tell you this no see technique I showed simple examples to make you comfortable I see if I have to analyze a protein spectrum or a big molecule to analyze no see spectrum itself will take several hours every cross peak we have to identify and then start getting the information about the spatial proximity structural information and finally, the distance information. So, that that is a huge task that is only if you are in that field if you are working on a particular molecule it spent several hours several days and weeks to get the structure that is fine that is why I took only small simple molecules to make you comfortable. Even then let us say if your uh, fairly big molecule you are doing if you are a biologist like, or a biophysicist or a biochemist you have a pretty fairly big protein you are trying to work on and then you are getting a very good NOC spectrum let us say which containing several hundreds of cross peaks that is fine it you know for such molecule you have to do that. But you are a small molecule let us say we do not require that much time you do not have to acquire in a 2D data spend hours of you know several hours of experimental time. And if it is a simple spectra like we saw in some of the previous examples of the NOSI can we do the same 2D experiment in a one dimensional way that is what I said steady state and we selectively we can exit one of the uh, protons that is what I told you and then apply as if, uh, equivalent RF powers identical RF power far off resonance far off from the region of interest and then take that as a reference spectrum take the difference between the two if there is an NOE you will see the enhancement of the signal intensity if that is positive or negative is a different question you are going to see that by taking the difference. And of course, that is a very if it is a simple molecule like in the previous examples we saw there is only one if you want to find out whether the cis or trans and if you know if you have made the assignment by a simple 1D or a COSI experiment why do you have to spend time to do the NOSI can you not do in a 1D way. So, many of these 2D experiments like TOXI, NOSI, HSQC, ROSI all this thing can be done in a one dimensional way you do not need to go for 2D also all the time unless there is a pressing need for it. So, I will show you how we can utilize one dimensional and no seat technique to get the structural information in some of the molecules. We will start with that uh, work today. This is called selective NOE experiment also called steady state NOE experiments. I discussed this when I was discussing the concept of NOE and varieties of NOE experiment. Steady state NOE experiment is very simple you apply a pre saturation RF power 
small uh, pulse so RF pulse for pre-saturating the weakest selected signal of your interest apply 90 degree pulse start collecting the signal that is a very simple one of course I told you you have to carry out the difference experiment selectively saturate a proton with by very low RF power for a time t collect the spectrum identical experiment you do apply a same RF power far off place for the same amount of time so that intensities are not getting perturbed because of RF power even if there is a perturbation it should be equal for both of them collect the spectrum that is what I said and this is the reference spectrum. Now take the difference between these two this is what I told you in the steady state experiment if you do that difference of that if there is NY you are going to see it this is all the steady state experiment you can do very simple experiment and of course lot of things about uh, selectivity uh, of the particular pre frequency and then uh, uniform perturbation of the multiplicity multiplets everything all complications if you do not do what will happen we discussed. So, the in the steady state experiment selectivity of the frequency for saturation is very important pre saturation assuming that you are all uh, comfortable with that you know how to do the experiment. Let us look at the applications of some of them by using only steady state and V. I am going to discuss couple of experiment ex applications today. One is you can identify E and Z geometry in the alkene isomers already we saw in the 2D no C to finding out system channel geometry. We can find out aromatic substitution position that also we saw. We can make the resonance assignment that is very important. You can identify while making the assignment if you get a doubt whether this proton is this or the other one which is the resonance frequency for a particular proton then at times NOE also comes into picture and then conformational preference if there is any all these things can be addressed anyway these are all there are many many more applications I am just trying to show you one or two applications where by you know by doing one dimensional selective NOE you can always address some of your problems some of your research interests you do not require a big 2D no C spectrum and everything you just you can do it by 1D no C dif uh, steady state difference and Y experiment. We will start with this one let us say this is a spectrum of this molecule one to this four, there are only this is a phenyl group we are not uh, worried about what is that and everything this is the phenyl group basically there is a CH2 proton and these two are the protons two protons which is attached to that ring ok 5 membered ring. Now our doubt is which is this proton there are two here which is there are two correspond to these two H A and H B one is H A other is H B which is H A which is H B I do not know I could make a mistake because there is no way I can identify this C C H Y is far away I can identify this C H 2 is separately here I can identify this then between these two proton which is which the this specific assignment of the individual protons could be little bit problematic all the molecule is very simple of course there are ways to do that you can go into the take the nitrogen 15 HSQC see, see the long range correlation H, uh, HMBC long range correlation etc. That is all ok but in a simple way one dimensional experiment if you want to do to ma make the site specific assignment of this particular proton what I will do a 1D steady state difference in O experiment. I will irradiate this proton, CH2 proton is here, this is a normal spectrum. And then I take the difference after irradiating this, take the difference. When you take the difference, of course, this will be saturated and uh, the, this there will not be any signal after saturation. So, the difference when you take this will be negative, that is what is happening. When you take a different spectrum, the saturated peak will not be there when you saturate. So, when you take the difference in the normal spectrum, that will be a negative peak huge intense negative peak will be there that is what it is this tells me I have saturated CH2 protons this is ok not a well result spectrum it is a simple little broad and clumsy spectrum but this all this entire group of spectral lines if at all is even if it is resolved I, it is attributed to phenyl group then what is left these two but if you see the difference in OE here I saturate you know selectively this CH2 and take the difference of course, there is some change in the intensity for a phenyl group that is ok. Some NOE is transferred to one of these uh, protons of the phenyl group that is expected because it is close to uh, it is attached to phenyl group only. But then 
if you see carefully this peak there is no change at all there is no, it is not seen at all but you will see there is a NOE, a NOE for this proton which is that proton this CH2 when you radiate the closest spatial proximity is this one so it can give NOE only to this with this idea I can specifically assign this proton to HA very easy so this is assignment problem if you need to make the assignment properly even the small molecule and why do you need a 2D no C for this, uh, this simple molecule see so all you need to know is simple molecule you, you have to identify CH2 use your idea if you use this uh, uh, selectively saturated CH2 uh, if at all there is NOE it has to be only for this then you make the specific assignment so assignment problem can be solved this is one way so selective saturation CH2 clearly establish this is a HA proton fine I will give you a little difficult problem in the sense little bit more complex. How do you distinguish two naphthalene structures by steady state NOE? What is this uh, two naphthalene structure? Let us see this one. There are two naphthalene structures here. One is see that see this group CH2CA3 is here, another is CA3 attached. There are two possible structures we can think of A and B. Hmm. What is A? In the case of A, this CH2CA3, C, I am sorry, CL. CH2CL is here. CA3 is this side. Whereas in the other case, CA3 is at this side, CH2CL is here. There are two possible structures for this naphthalene substituted molecule. Our job is to find out the challenge is which is the correct structure. We do not know. These are the two possibilities. And the NMR spectrum is taken. When you take, once you take the NMR spectrum, first you have to make the assignment. Assignment is simple. Of course, this entire region is expanded here. If you expand, already I have told you how to assign the phenyl protons. These two are the exclusively two protons which experience only orthocoupling. Whether it is this molecule or this molecule, does not matter. There are only two protons which experience only one orthocoupling and a broad, uh, a large doublet will be there which is that one if you look at and of course this we can assign CH3 proton and this is CH2 which is attached to chlorine so a little bit downfield fine. So assignment can be done this aromatic proton when you want to assign I would say these two are for the this phenyl ring fair enough because there are these are the only two doublets with identical peak separation and this must be from this phenyl group. In this phenyl group there are four protons there are different multiplicity pattern you are going to see. So, that there if you see these two protons will be more like a triplet structure I told you two ortho couplings and one meta couplings for this one if you carefully see these two these two protons each one will experience one ortho coupling two ortho couplings and one meta coupling each of them. So, as a consequence it will be like a triplet of a doublet. So, these two are these two protons and of course remaining two protons here one ortho and meta and para coupling in principle each of them should be doublet of doublet of a doublet of a doublet eight line pattern does not matter we are, uh, we are not worried about multiplicity pattern at the moment we can uh, assign all those things very carefully but I just want to assign these four protons belong to this phenyl group fair enough assignment okay. But my our problem is whether CA3 is this side or CA3 this side of the naphthalene ring we will see that. So, assignment if this confirms of course this type of assignment one thing I can tell you this type of assignment if it is there what are the possible uh, structure for this these two protons here if I remove that these two protons these two substitutions should be ortho to each other if not other possibilities it should be para to each other why only then there is a possibility of two protons experiencing ortho coupling. If it was meta then we will have a meta coupling which is much smaller ortho coupling is quite larger and there is only one ortho coupling for both of them. As a consequence the first conclusion is these two substituents are ortho to each other or para to each other one of the possibilities we can think of it must be either ortho or para to each other. But para is ruled uh, of course para can be there but we can rule it out 
by doing some difference one d difference and y experiment. What we will do is we selectively saturate CH2 proton. This is the molecular structure. Of course, these two this is CA3 and you see this proton is enhanced. What is that proton? If you carefully see this proton has been assigned these two are for the one phenyl ring and these two for other phenyl ring. This when you irradiate CH2 CH2 enhancement is seen at 8.13 ppm and also CH3 protons when it can happen. This can happen only if you carefully see this let us look at this this can happen if I am irradiating this CH2 you cannot get NOE for this you can get NOE for CH3 that is correct that is possibility is there. But for one of the phenyl protons when there is NOE it must be this it is to the proton of the other ring other phenyl ring not where CH3 is attached. So, I would say this is the possible structure for this this says enhancement of another proton is consistent with the structure it cannot be this ok. If it is this let us say this can give to this one for this proton and not for other proton see assignment we have already done. So, it is not possible this assignment is clearly known. So, obviously, if this is the structure only you can get enhancement at this proton and enhancement for CA3 that is one conclusion, but we can further confirm it by doing selective radiation of CA3 proton CA3 is here selective ready selectively I have saturated that. Now, when I do that there is enhancement for CH2 and also there is enhancement for one of the protons at 7.34 this 7.34 proton we know it is from this phenyl group from the assignment we have already made understand. So, I saturate CH3 I am getting enhancement at the CH2 and also at the phenyl proton then this cannot be the structure because if I saturate this one ok CH3 I may get enhancement for this NOE for this, but not for this that is not possible it can get give for this like we saw in the previous case. So, uh, so it cannot give for this obviously this must be the structure because if you saturate the CH3 you get enhancement here and enhancement for CH2 look at the structure here. You have, we have saturated CH3 we are getting enhancement at CH2 and enhancement of one of the protons of this phenyl ring. So, that must be the structure. So, this irradiation of both CH2 and CH3 confirms and this must be the correct structure of the molecule you understand now we could get the stu correct structure of the molecule. This is the way we could identify the substitution in the naphthalene rings we can do another thing uh, the regio chemistry of two alkyl substituents of the pyridine ring I will see this is the pyridine ring. Now, there are two possible structures given here one is CH 2 CH 3 here and CH 3 is here this is the nitrogen. So, this is CH 3 and this is CH 2 CH 3 alternately this is CH 2 CH 3 CH 3 is here understand CH 3 could be between these two protons or CH2 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 CH3 could be between these two protons. So, this is called 2 methyl 5 ethyl pyridine or this is 2 ethyl 5 methyl pyridine. See methyl pyridine methyl ethyl pyridine or ethyl methyl pyridine these are the two possible structures. How do you identify which is which? Okay. We will go for this this is the NMR spectrum and of course, there are only 3 protons CH 2 CH 3 is here we know that CH 3 here CH 2 here of course, which is methyl CH 3 which is methyl CH 2 you can identify ok one CH 3 is here that is other one is CH 2 CH 3 it has to be quartet and triplet this is from CH 2 CH 3 group other CH 3 is here ok fine with this this is more like a singlet this is more like a singlet. So, I so this has to be C A 3 has to be a singlet there is no way it can get coupling to anything and long range coupling. So, this if it is C A 3 it is a singlet also we can make the assignment this C A 3 singlet and C H 2 and C A 3 for group 
methylene and ethyl group is aside. Then what is left over? Phenyl group. In the phenyl group there are three protons. This is very easy to assign because uh, consider this proton. This has only ortho coupling and, and para coupling. If it is not resolved, it is only a simply a doublet. What is that possibility? You can look at it. There is a doublet here. This is possibly experience going ortho coupling and para coupling is not resolved. Whereas if you look at this proton H4, this experience ortho coupling with this and a meta coupling with this, it is going to be doublet of a doublet. So it is H4. What is left over? This one. And this one H6 has to be a doublet because it is coupled only to this. So, based on this assignment of all the four phenyl protons have been made with the knowledge of multiplicity pattern everything. Now, the question still remains is whether the ethyl group is there here R and R prime is methyl or ethyl. If R is ethyl R prime has to be methyl, if R is meth R prime is methyl other one has to be ethyl. So, whether we have to find out what is what. What we will do is we will selectively do the inversion of one of the CH2 or selective saturation. We will do one of the protons. Which one? We are going to do the CH2. CH2 CH3 is there, you know. Selectively we are it invert one of the CH2 protons, I mean CH2 protons of the CH2 CH3 group that is done, selectively inverted. And NOE is done, difference NOE is taken. So, this is the group our normal spectrum and this is different spectrum after selective radiation. Where are we seeing the peaks? See there is enhancement for H6, enhancement for H4 and there is enhancement for CH3 with some distortion because of the multiplicity. As I told you if you, if you do not exit the people uh, all the group properly there is going to be a problem of antifacing. This is what I told you in the multiplicity you should have uniform perturbation should be there otherwise this antiphase character can nullify the intensity. But anyway there, there is there some distortion is there but not so much. Let us consider the intensity enhancement if you saturate CH2 proton you are going to see the enhancement of H6 and H4 and also CH3 what is that possibility ok. This conclusion is ethyl group is located at the position 5 of the phenyl ring this is ethy ethyl group not methyl because if CH2 is irradiated only the when these two are getting you know enhancement H4 and H6 it is possible only if ethyl is here. If it is ethyl is here these two cannot get the enhancement you understand. So, that is rules that rules out methyl here. So, R has to be ethyl group containing CH2 and CH3 that is easy very easily you can do that. So, ethyl group is situated at the uh, 5 position 5 of the pyridine ring. Then obviously, other one has to be methyl. To confirm further you can do other experiments also. We saw enhancement at H4 H6 selectively irradiate H6 obviously, you must see the enhancement at CH2 uh, this one CH2 you see that and also CH3 very easy. So, you could see that so, if selectively read H6 you got enhancement for uh, CH2 and this one. Similarly, you do for H4 you are seeing enhancement for CH2, CH3 and of course, some disturbance, uh, disturbance is there, but that neighboring peak is also getting uh, this thing. This will also uh, when you hit H4 this will also get enhanced that is ok that is not our interest, but, but uh, you understand H4 gives co uh, correlation to this and this and also bit of CH3 that clearly confirms this CH2 CH3 is next to each other it is not on this side of the period in ring ok. Further what you can do is you can also do a radiation of the CH3 H3 proton here. If you do H3 proton where do you expect the enhancement it has to be only this and this nothing else none of this should get the enhancement exactly you see this you are radiating this H, uh, selective saturation of H3 gives you enhancement for H4 proton and also for this C A 3 proton and bit of disturbance for other things ok that is not important more most important is H4 and C A 3 these are 
n as because of hitting C A 3 proton. What does it tell you? This tells me C A 3 has to be on the other side of this side next to nitrogen. So, this must be methyl, this must be methyl. So, different NOE experiment, selective NOE confirms which is the which is the isomer which you are looking at, whether it R group is methyl or ethyl, we can easily identify. Okay. We can do one more, take a little complicated molecule. In principle, for this, you require 2D in OC, but I can tell you sometimes, even in such big molecule, even simple NOC, one dimensional uh, difference in OE can also help. And there are, we are considering the molecule thujone. Thujone has two isomers alpha and beta. What is that alpha and beta? This is alpha, this is beta. In the case of alpha, what will happen is C6 is a car, gamma carbon. This have both gauge and anti relationship there. That means, once proton H4 proton is here, other case H4 proton is opposite, C3 is here. See, C A 3 and C A H 4 proton position gets changed for alpha and beta two zones. In the alpha two zone H 4 is close to C endo, C H 6 endo, whereas in beta two zone C A 3 is close to endo H 6 endo. These are the only two confirmational changes you can notice. Then it is easy if you identify what is H 6, simply do the selective radiation of that, do the NOE, selective NOE. Then if you find out whether the enhancement is and the C A 3 proton or H 4 proton, then you know whether it is alpha 2 zone or beta 2 zone, very easily we can do that. And this is alpha 2 zone, in this case we have C 6, C 10 are on the same set of the 5 membered ring C 6 and C 10, both are on the, I am sorry on the opposite side of the C 6 is here and C 10 is here, opposite C A 3, they are on the opposite side of the 5 membered ring, whereas in the beta 2 zone. Of course, C 6 and C 10 here, they are on the C 6 and C 10, they are on the same side. See, they are on the same side of the 5 membered ring. In the previous ex, uh, previous case, they are opposite each other. C 6 is this side, C 10 is below, okay, opposite side. We, now, of course, we can also do the, of course, mind you, in the carbon 13 NMR also gives you a lot of information about the isomers, stereo isomers. Although I did not explicitly tell you, I, the, the carbon 13 chemical shift can also be used to get the stereoisomer information. For example, in the alpha tejan and beta tejan if you consider, see these protons 4 and these protons 6 and 10 especially in beta tejan are shifted quite a bit by 4 to 6 ppm. Similarly, this proton 4 and 5 are also shifted. This is because of steric hindrance there, you know steric clash is there between C 6 and T 10 and that will push these carbons away, little far away. Similarly, for C4 and C5, it pushes to high field. Both these carbons compared to alpha tejon, they are moved high field because of steric clash. Of course, if you go through the carbon 13 NMR very, very carefully, there is a lot of things to discuss. Then you can also get the information about isomers by looking at the chemical shift information. Chemical shift also tells you based on how much it has moved high field or low field, some idea if we need some expertise on that, you can also get information. Okay, assuming that we are not interested, we do not know uh, that much, we want to observe only 1D selective NOE and see that. In the NOE, here what we can do? We can selectively invert the 6 endo here, 6 endo, not XO, 6 endo peak in 2 zone. We do not know which is which, does not matter. We will take that, then both could be 6 endo. When you invert, take the uh, look at the NOE position for. H4 and H10, that is what I told you. If there is enhancement for H10, then it is beta. If there is enhancement at H4, it is alpha. Very easily you can do selective NOE. You do not need to go for 2D NOE for this. So, alpha region should go a very strong peak for H4 and weak NOE pass for methyl H10 for this very weak. Converse is the case for beta region. So, beta will uh, give strong NOE for this one and weak NOE for this one. You see the distance matters, distance is less than 5 angstroms here. Okay. This is 3.1, this is nearly 4, that makes a difference. Okay. We will see that how this experiment is done. This is selective NOE and one of the diastereomer, I do not, do not know whether alpha or beta. Some molecule has been chosen, 
whether it is alpha or beta I do not know. This is a normal one dimensional spectrum and selective inversion is done for 6 endo. Assuming that assignment has been done by using cosy or using your knowledge of multiplicity pattern everything which can be done you simply by using cosy you can make the assignment. Especially x one endo one important thing is in the sugar molecules like this what you should remember is x o will be always downfield and endo will be in the high field and x o to x o x o coupling j coupling between x o uh, uh, is much larger here you can see splitting is much larger than this one. But remember x o will be little downfield compared to endo not always true but some most of the time you can ident identify that. So, now 6 endo is here selectively inverted and this is the difference spectrum. See what is the difference? There is enhancement for proton 4 large enhancement where is proton uh, 10 very small you know that is a distorted one and another enhancement is proton 5 and I have 6 XO of course when you in, uh, hit 6 endo 6 XO has to have enhancement because they are just they know they are geminal protons. So, obviously if you hit one other one has a strong enhancement that is not an important thing but what is important is H4 has a very strong NOE okay. This is this what it is very strong NOE. H10 also is a bit bit of distorted one. So, the largest NOE for H6 XO because of geminal distance and NOE for H2 endo is also there and H4 endo H4 proton is large because the distance is very small. A strong NOE for H4 peak and a weak for H10 confirms this is alpha 2 zone that is what I told you. So, I did not know the molecule I did not know the alpha or beta, but I knew by the structure if I hit 6 endo H4 if it is intense NOE is stronger there that must be alpha otherwise it is if it is H10 is stronger that is beta ok we will confirm that the fourth NOE peak is something H5 that all are not important for us. Now, from this NOE experiment you can conclude H4 is on the endo phase of the 5 membered ring close to 6 endo and H10 methyl group on the XO phase far from X endo. Obviously, this sample is alpha to zone and not beta to zone because of the NOE. H4, H4 is on the endo phase of the 5 membered ring that is very close to H6 endo and the H10 is other side XO side because of that we can say it is a alpha isomer. Now, we will take other iso other uh, stereo isomer same thing I do not know which one which. Now, what we will do the selective irradiation of 6 endo again and take the difference here what is that you are seeing you see the enhancement for 2 endo and of course, 6 endo is always XO is known because they are in the have a geminal relationship. Another important thing is you will see enhancement for proton 10 of course, there is antiphase relationship because of some uh, issue here does not matter, but you can see enhancement is more for H 10 and little bit for 8 9 and major is there for a 2 endo. So, look at this largest NOE for this H 6 X O is 0 0.76 percent a strong NOE for a H 2 endo is also re revealed ok and then a strong NOE combined with the subtraction artifact is observed for H 10 subtraction artifact is my 2 multiplets are uh, you know positive 2 multiplets are negative in intensity it could be subtraction artifact or it could be because of improper uh, excitation of multiplets we do not know, but there is an artifact does not matter, but still it gives a largest uh, NOE for that. So, what is the conclusion H 4 is on the XO phase of the 5 membered ring H 4 far away from endo and the H 10 H methyl is on the endo phase close to 6 H 6 endo that shows the sample is beta to John and not alpha to John very easily you could distinguish two isotop isomers alpha and beta isomers to Jones by just doing selective NOE experiment. So, this is what I wanted to tell you about uh, this thing now that since the time is getting up what I am going to do is I will st uh, stop now I will continue with one or two more examples of where do you apply it, uh, selective NOE 1D selective NOE. So, that you can get the confirmation information. I took simple molecule and then slowly we went to a little bit maybe a bigger molecule in this class what we understood is selective irradiation of one of the protons you could identify 
close spatial proximity of other protons and get confirmation what is the cis z trans and e z geometric isomers we can identify. There are lots of pi experiments we can do. Only thing is the requirement is frequency selective excitation has to be proper otherwise you will be distorting there is a leakage of the frequency if you selectively excite neighboring protons then it could be confusing. And we also have found out you can identify isomers and regio specificity depending upon the substitution of the phenyl group whether it is uh, which place the substitution is present. And in the regio specificity we uh, uh, substitution we understood whether the methyl or ethyl group and whether it is which side of the pyridine ring also we understood. All this because simple one dimensional difference in OE experiment. The conclusion is you do not need to go for a 2 D no see a big experiment and they spend lot of instrument time and more time and then you to get into that in, instead of that if your molecule is simple just by looking at it you know which to uh, irradiate simply do the one dimensional difference in OE you will get the structural information. So, with this I am going to stop here in the next class we will continue with one or maybe one example another example where we can get different type of information and then we will go to a different type of one dimensional experiment. Thank you very much.